This is my video response to our EdTech class 531, uh, Teaching and Learning in Virtual Worlds. Now, we had a video response we were supposed to do to a, uh, a reading and a video. The reading was Immersive Interfaces for Engagement and Learning, and the video was a TED Talk, TED Talk uh, Halifax by Evan Jones, Belief is Not Binary. Now, the, the Immersive Interfaces for Engaging and Learning was by Chris Deed. And my, my impressions for that right off the bat, let me see here, was they talked about in, inducing this sense of um, uh, sim, symbolic immersion with participants, this uh, triggering uh, semantic uh, psychological association. And the way I took that is uh, you have this sense of um, reality because of the immersion that go that takes place and the first thing that struck me was how we are using minecraft in our class and how that day night cycle has that that same that same trigger of those of those semantic psychological effects in that you have this urgency that's created uh, with the night cycle because you know monsters are going to come out and start blowing things up and destroying you and doing all that kind of stuff so even if it's a simple task you get put placed in a sense of urgency which then then increases your level of um, immersion because you feel like you're on this this you know the sped up heartbeat you got you got to get stuff done and things like that then you can take a take a break in nightfall if you have shelter of course and then go back out and accomplish another task but you're immediately drawn in to that urgency because of that day night cycle Another thing that stood out for me for his reading was his the the discussion of the exocentric versus the egocentric. With the exocentric, for lack of a better term in my mind, was it's kind of like that third person kind of standing back view in a game, where the egocentric is more the first person right involved in the action, kind of following through the game and talking about how they both had different outcomes. The exocentric was more you're able to look at the broader picture uh, and get more symbolic meaning and insights out of what you're seeing, where the egocentric was more, more directed, it was more immersive, uh, and had that result. And that reminded me of discussions we'd had of, of synchronous versus asynchronous with discussions, whether like on a discussion board being being asynchronous that it afforded more thoughtful responses and answers from students because they had time to think about it where a synchronous response in kind of an IM or chat uh, served a slightly different purpose in that it it built community better because people had more of a one-to-one -one dialogue getting to know each other and so both of them were were necessary just like in the exocentric and egocentric it might be egocentric to get involved in the actual action of what you're doing to immerse yourself but then you can pull back into an exocentric mode to do problem solving or puzzle solving or things like that how they just change the view that lets your perspective change now with the next one with uh, the TED talk uh, Evan Jones belief is not binary now he, he made a statement that I found real interesting and it reminded me of gameplay and I'll talk about that in a second but it was how do we know something is false but still gain meaning from it uh, now he used a lot of references to like he, we talked about suspension of disbelief he talked about belief and disbelief, that suspension of disbelief. Um, but he also talked about things like interactive fiction. He mentioned these kind of catch words, collaborative story, things like that. And these weren't new words to me just for the sake of my gaming background in, in being a longtime tabletop gamer, not just a video gamer, but things with uh, doing role play games and LARPs or live action role play games. But it all started way back in the 70s. Uh, with playing D and D, where you had a dragon master, and there's a, there were the person that kind of presented you with the story, and even though it was more an actor than sitting around watching TV, there was a sense of now that I look back, a sense of passivity to it, because you were kind of being presented with this and then just responding, and such. And now eventually, 
as as the games progressed in how they immersed people, this started to change. I remember there was kind of a different tone with uh, with uh, Foss's Shadowrun, which I really enjoyed and played quite a bit. But I don't think it was until really uh, Mark Reinhagen with uh, White Wolf Publishing and they started doing the Vampire Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, that there was a, a shift in the, the lexicon of how people talked about uh, the process of role play and how to immerse people. And he, in the werewolf book, I'll have it here. I want to read something real quick. Storytelling allows us to understand ourselves by giving us a tool with which to explain our triumphs and defeats. By looking at our culture, our family, and ourselves in a new context, we can understand things we never before realized. Storytelling is entertaining because it is so revealing and exhilarating because it is so true. Um, this, this just reminded me immediately of the, the quote of how do we know something is false but still gain such meaning from it that the presenter was talking about. And it's that, that active engagement. He added, it's not just the suspension of disbelief, and I know all about that with a 10 year old son that doesn't quite know how to do that because he hasn't been jaded enough to go, okay, I need, just need to focus on my suspension of disbelief and I'll enjoy the movie where he wants to answer, ask all these questions. But the, the, the talk discussed that performance of belief, that there's that other step and this is the difference between the passivity and the uh, being the active and then with the white wolf system it really focused with this idea of games and immersion that it, you didn't have a dungeon master or a game master you know had a storyteller and it identified the person as a storyteller and was specific to say that as a group you were creating a story and you were storytelling together um, and that's what it is like for what the talk talked about was this whole moving people into these immersive virtual worlds and supplanting it with real world interaction to make it immersive. And in a game environment, in a role playing game environment, you want some basic things to make it su successful. You want to have a, um, a safe environment so people feel that they can express themselves. You want to have artifacts that people can identify with and see and touch and uh, um, connect with. You want to have immediate outcomes so people feel like, oh, I've reached an immediate uh, accomplishment. And you want to have active participants. With this immersive uh, educational storytelling, you get that same kind of thing. And I, you, you have the safe environment, the artifacts, the immediate outcomes, the active participants. But I think it's it's key that this happens, especially the safe environment. It happens because of the ability, the pervasive technology that is now out there, that it's it becomes more accepted. You see people all the time walking around with an earbud in and talking by it to themselves. 20 plus years ago, people would have thought, why are they talking to themselves? That's just odd. But now it's kind of a, a more that that's okay. And if people are animated, about their discussion, that's fine. And people wouldn't realize that they're actually playing a game and interacting that way. And, and so that's some things that really stood out for me is the ability for this, uh, this pervasiveness of technology in education and in our real life world that, that makes this possible to do this kind of uh, education and this kind of immersive um, experience for learners. So, uh, oh, and that reminded me of, uh, I saw that linked, the, the video linked me to another video that I thought was also interesting that you might check out. It's called, it's another TED Talk. It's uh, TED Talk uh, Salt Lake City by Jeff Parkin on uh, the future of story, which links in well with the whole idea of belief is not binary. And I guess my dog came in to say goodbye. So thanks very much.